Welcome to this video where I show how to write a scripted rule that applies to this diverted outlet from a reservoir. And I have a very simple setup here. I have a main stem, I have a tributary, and I have a single reservoir, and right here is the diverted outlet. So if we go look at some of the properties at this reservoir, first we can look at the physical properties. And on the, well, I have one reservoir, and on that uh, reservoir I have one controlled outlet from the dam itself, and then I have the diverted outlet, which is, um, has a maximum capacity of 100 CFS, and that's for the full range of elevation values that I expect. If we go look at the operations, um, I have the three zones. I have flood control, conservation, and active. So top of flood control is at 90, top of conservation is at 75, and top of inactive is at 50. And I only have one rule that's applied to this. Um, I have the rule of um, uh, for the, the diversion, and it's a scripted rule. And the way that you develop this is that you would just do a you would do a, a new rule, and as you could see, that error message said that you don't create rules for the inactive zone. And I'm not going to save this, but let's we'll call this rule AA. And if we were to do a, a rule that's specific for the diverted outlet, we want to tell uh, RESTSIM that, and then you just choose that you want a script. I'm going to cancel that. I don't want to create a new rule because I've already created the rule. But when you do create a scripted rule, you'll notice that there's already some code in there and then look for this comment by the way the hashtag um, just means that it's a comment in the code and it says to add your code here and I just have a few lines of code but the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to get the time series for the pool elevation at the main stem because I'm gonna make my well, at least for this first run I'm going to make the releases that I'm sending out of this diverted outlet dependent upon what the pool elevation is at the main stem of the reservoir. Now you can see that this looks like quite a bit of code, but that's where your interface on the side can help. Um, so this part of the code you can actually get just by going to the interface and telling it that you uh, want to uh, get a model variable. I want to get a model variable from the reservoir and I want to use the main stem reservoir and if I just double click on the pool elevation you can see that it actually writes this part of the code and then I can make that an object and what that part of the code is telling me is that I'm going out to get a time series which is the pool elevation. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to delete this part of the code that I just put in there because I already have it written. And now what I have this object, so I just have to add, and you might think of it as a variable name, um, but I, I basically call it main res underscore ts, and that's the time series. And then I need to tell res sim, what do I want to do with that object? And in this case, I'm going to uh, make another name that is main res underscore elevation, and that's going to be... Uh, I'm going to use the time series of the pool elevation and I'm going to say I want you to get the previous value based on the current run time step. So basically uh, these two lines of code are getting the time series for the pool elevation and also pulling that pool elevation at the previous time step as RESSIM is running on a time step by time step basis. Uh, this part of the code I'll uh, go over in um, uh, a little bit. I wanted to add it in for right now, but we're not actually using that right now. So our if statement is going to be if the main res elevation is less than or equal to 60, then I set um, this variable divrel or diversion release equal to 25, and then if it's greater than 60, it's going to be equal to 50. And then the, the final thing that you need to do is you need to tell res sim whether or not it's a rule type max, a rule type min, or a rule type spec or specify. And um, I forget what this defaults to, but there'll be some code in here. I believe that this, it just automatically puts it in as a thousand, but you have to go and either put in a constant or some sort of variable name. 
that you saw for in the script. In this case, I wanted to use div row, and I want the rule type to be specified, so I'm not using a min or a max for this. I am using it uh, as a specified release, and remember that this rule is applied uh, specifically to the diverted outlet. So I think that we're ready. So if we go ahead and run this, you can see it runs. And if we go and look at what's coming out of the diverted outlet, you can see that we do have 25 CFS coming from the diverted outlet up until very early on the 21st of January, and then it jumps up to 50. So that tells me that we, we're probably getting to that elevation 60 sometime early on the 21st in the main stem of the reservoir. So let's take a look at the plot and see if that is actually the case. And this is 60, so it looks like right about here, which is again very early on the 21st, that we are getting to uh, 60. So it appears that that scripted rule is working correctly. Now I wanted to go in and uh, make a slight modification to it. So let's say that you only wanted to divert during certain times of the, of the day. So maybe you only want to divert um, maybe in the last three hours of the day. So this is where we use this current hour. So in this case, you know, we're, again, we're making this object called current hour. And this is the code that we use to get the hour of that time step. So we can actually add something to our if statement. And we can say that if it's less than 60 and per hour is greater than or equal to 22, then we want this. And we we'll actually have to change this to do a LF I'm going to say if it's less than or equal to 60 and per hour is less than 22, then we want it to be 0. And again, we'll have to add another because then we have all of these different uh, cases now. So we'll say LF main res LF is greater than 60 and per hour is greater than or equal to 22. Then we wanted the div row to be equal to 50. And I think in this case we could just say then else div row equals 0. And I didn't thoroughly test the logic, but I think that we should be okay with that. Um, but again, you would want to make sure that you test the logic, because basically we're saying that if it's greater than 60, but the current hour is less than 22, then we want it to be zero. So basically, if it's not um, hours 22, 23, or 24, then we don't want there to be any, uh, any uh, releases taking place. So let's see if I did the code correctly. Let's see if this works. And again, I'm working on this in the simulation module. Um, and so if you do want to save it um, to, to your base model, you need to do a save to base. And again, you just do that by right clicking here and saying save to base directory. So let's see if this worked out OK. So here we should see. Yes, we should see these little spikes that are occurring. And we do see that. So. Um, it looks like this is uh, um, a flow of 25, and it occurs, it looks like, in the later part of the day. Let's blow this up and see how well it's behaving. Yeah, so that appears to be working correctly. And then as we move further down, and this must be where you get 
a, an elevation that's greater than uh, 60 in the main reservoir, then it jumps up to 50. So that appears to be working well. Um, one thing I did want to point out, I, I kind of stumbled across this. I, I thought this might make a good video, but I was actually trying to connect this uh, back up to maybe an upstream reservoir, an upstream point. And for some reason, I was having some difficulties with doing that. And so um, I'm not sure if you'll run into the same issue, but I was actually trying to study um, how ResSim would handle a, uh, a re-regulation reservoir with pump back. And uh, ResSim does have pumps, and I think that that's probably going to be the way that we'll, we'll have to, to do that if we run into that type of situation. Because I tried to do it with a diversion and a diverted outlet, and it didn't seem to behave very well. Um, so anyway, hopefully this video was uh, helpful to you. And if you want to know when more videos are coming out, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And, and thanks for watching this video.